easy photo is an easy way to swap faces in photographs. Train a face Laura, pick a photo to face swap, and then generate. Yes, hello and welcome to more Nerdy Rodent Geekery where today I explore the easy photo extension for the automatic 1111 web interface. See how to use it, if it can do video, what it does well, and also what it does not quite as well. This is indeed also available for comfy UI, but I just like to switch things up a little. As usual with these extensions, you can install it via Available from the Extensions tab. Click Load From to get the list. Click Install for both Easy Photo and ControlNet if you don't have both of those already, and then Apply and Restart. However, be warned, the first time you run this, you'll be in for a little bit of a wait. You'll also need to have a good chunk of disk space as this can take up to 60 gig for all of the downloads. It will be less if you have some of the files already, just so long as they are in exactly the place it expects with the file names it expects too. Things it downloads includes the Chill Out Mix Stable Diffusion 1.5 checkpoint, an SDXL checkpoint and a whole bunch of control net models. Also, as usual with these extensions, its requirements may clash with those of other extensions you have installed. If you have issues where the Easy Photo tab won't appear, you may need to disable some of your other extensions. For this video, the version I'm using is the one displayed there, 9C78. 259F and in my tests the runs here need at least 10 gig of VRAM for training though of course your mileage may vary. In addition it needs at least three control nets for inference so be sure multi control net max models is set to three or higher. Also take a look at the easy photo extension page on GitHub for any updates as well. Once installed, hop on over to the Easy Photo tab where you'll need to start with training. The defaults work well, though there are advanced options available as well should you wish to change those. Do exactly as it says on the screen, upload your photo following that guide. 5 to 20 half body photos or head and shoulder photos please don't make the proportion of your face too small. Training is going to take about 25 minutes and perhaps try to limit your photos to about one and a half meg each. Okay, so let's get this going. Click upload photos and then you will be able to upload a whole selection of photos there. I'm just selecting them all. You can upload them all at once and those will appear in your gallery. This is also known as a data set because it's a set of data. All right, so there it is. There's my data set, 14 images following the guide provided, apart from I made all my images for Meg because I'm extremely naughty sometimes. You'll also notice that they do have a rather limited wardrobe as here at Rodent Studios. We don't really have much of a budget and hats off to her she did really well being barefoot that day anyway if you don't want to pay somebody to be your friend for the day and take photographs of them you could always try taking pictures of yourself or as i actually did here simply use my reposer workflow to generate a variety of poses instantly from a single image anyway with that data set upload all you need to do now really is click start training when you do that, it is going to give you a little pop up and ask for the name of your Laura. It's going to save that as a Laura file. So don't overwrite any of the ones you've got there. It will pop up and say, hey, this name is already in use. But before I click that, let's have a look at these advanced options. As you can see there, some fairly standard things. It's also got a bit of information down the bottom there about the parameter parsing. Now, by default, you'll just get those two to start with. Those are the two models it downloads. But if you click the refresh button, then you'll get your usual list of models. So pick the model you want to use there. And there you go. That's the one I'm going to use. And you've got all these different settings across here. Resolution is good at 512. Increasing that will, of course, need more VRAM. For example, if you put that 
that up to 640, then you're gonna need at least 16 gig. Validation and save steps defaults to 100, meaning with the max steps at 800, you'll get up to eight checkpoints saved. In the Easy Photo User ID infos, user weights directory, as well as the final model there as well. So with each of those being 151 meg, I personally set that value a little bit higher and usually use around half the number of max train steps. So there in that example, I set that to 400 and it saves fewer files along the way. Max steps per photo defaults there to 200, which in this case would usually mean a total of 14 photos I've got there times that 200 max steps per photo giving me 2,800 steps. But as I have the max train steps there set to 800, that's the actual limit which is going to be applied. Again, if you have more VRAM, you can change things like the train batch size and gradient accumulation as well. But having played around with this for a while, honestly, those default settings are absolutely fine. The same goes for the rank and network alpha. If you have experience with LoRa training already, then you know go ahead and change those, but the defaults are absolutely fine. It does have another option there for enable reinforcement learning. That will take a little bit longer, but can improve the quality of the result. You've also got other options there for validation and skin retouching. Okay, that about covers training. So for the most part, really, all you want to do in the advanced options is change your base model, perhaps the resolution if you have more VRAM, but mostly those defaults are absolutely fine. So all you really need to do is click start training. And then there where it says user ID, it's not really a user ID. It's just a name that you're giving for your training subject here. Now, obviously the naming convention you use is entirely up to you, but as the results do come out better when you use the same stable diffusion checkpoint that you trained with, one thing I tend to do is put the, a sort of summary of that checkpoint, which checkpoint I used in this case, analog madness at the beginning of the user ID, so I know which checkpoint I trained this model on. All you need to do then is click OK and wait for around 25 minutes. Once you see the message, the training has been completed, then you're ready to go over to the inference tab. There are four options here, template, upload, batch, upload, and SDXL beta. The template tab, as you can see here, simply has a variety of example images that you can select and then transfer, like I've done there, your newly trained face onto. So all you have to do is pick an image, whichever image you want, and then down the bottom here, once again, you can select your base checkpoint. The user ID, that's the one that we just trained, remember, in that little pop-up box where you put the name. Once again, the defaults are absolutely fine, so all you really need to do is just click on Start Generation and that will transfer over. If we crack open those advanced options, as you can see, there are quite a few in there and it's got some more information at the bottom if you need to know more about what they do. But essentially there, you can see you've got face fusion before. So how much of the face do you want to transfer before and after number of diffusion steps by default, 50, the denoising strength, which can go all the way up to 0.6 or all the way down to 0.3. So they're limiting the ranges there for fairly sensible things. Second step diffusion and also the denoising for that second step diffusion, plus a whole bunch of options down here as well. Now, as for the face ID, there is meant to be something for multiple faces in settings, but all I have is cache preprocess model in inference. That's that's the only setting I've got there for easy photo. Now this isn't quite what it says in the readme. I haven't got this select number of face ID, so I don't know whether that's just the way I've installed it or there's a bug. Who knows? But for now I can only select the one face. So back over here we've got that number of face ID just leaving that at one. Okay, onto these other settings. Basically I leave all of those alone, crop face, all of that 
super resolution you may or may not want. One thing you can probably see missing from there is the actual resolution because it takes that from the input image. So if you're dragging a really large image into the upload section, which we'll look at in just a moment, and you've got super resolution as the last step, then yeah, that can result in a very large image indeed and will take quite some time to process. One thing to note down here, however, is this makeup transfer option. If you try to use this option, chances are you'll get the same error I did, which is related to NumPy saying these aliases were deprecated in NumPy 1.20 and uh, that's a really old version of NumPy which doesn't play well with Python 3.10 so for now I just leave that option unticked. These can take quite a while to generate so be prepared to wait much longer than usual as well. I've also found that you actually need to do this template gallery step first before you can use some of the other tabs which is a bit strange so always just do one of those first okay the next tab is upload and this is where you can use your own images time to put things to the test what can we throw at it here all right let's put in this picture here now this person has glasses so what is it going to do with glasses let's just use all the defaults and start generation and it seems a bit touch and go there. We've got sort of a bit of a glasses frame, which has almost turned into her hair, but it has removed her glasses, which I guess is correct because there weren't glasses in the original photo. How about if we are much kinder to it there? We have a photograph without glasses. Okay, that's a bit better. It does seem to be quite nicely uncanny valley. The eyes are weird, but yes, it's transferred her face across. Obviously it's kept the original hair and just changed the actual face portions there. I know this is easy photo, but what about if we use a painting? Excellent, that has come out completely strange. As you can see, it's tried to make it more realistic. If it prefers realistic, how about if we use a photo, but it's a photo of a statue. Looks to be equally as strange. I like it. It's still a little bit statuesque. It's sort of done some blending in there, but my, is that weird. How about the other way around though, if you're training a cartoon face? As it happens, I trained one earlier using this data set. So what will this one come out like? Pop over to inference and change that one to the cartoon. Yes, that is certainly still just as strange. You've got some really weird eyes going on there. All right, how about one final test here if we try to change the cartoon into a realistic photo? Uh, okay, well, there's, there's your answer, I, I guess. I guess. Personally, I think it does much better on photographic style images, but do give it a go yourself and see. All right, the next tab is batch upload, and I know what you're thinking, can it make videos? Well, judge for yourself and see. Uh, yeah, it's a little bit flickery, isn't it? For these, I turned off super resolution as well. There it is, super resolution at last. No thanks as processing already takes ages, even for these 90 frames. The SDXL beta tab is the last one here. And I found this a little bit touch and go. Often it would generate the first image, but never again. Hopefully this will work, but maybe not. Uh, this works slightly differently in that you can't upload an image. Instead, it generates one using SDXL and then does all the technical face swapping stuff afterwards. This also needs at least 16 gig of VRAM, so make sure you've got enough. Being marked as experimental, I'd expect some updates in the future to make this a little bit more stable. All right, you can see there, obviously you've got loads of different options. You can have upper body or headshot, girl, woman, type of cloth. You can have different colors, all that sort of stuff. So let's see if it generates or if it just crashes. Okay, looks like we got lucky this time and you know, it works quite nicely when it does. So they're a completely new generated person 
but with that trained face transferred onto it. Just to finish off here, it will also create a LoRa, which you can use as normal. So there, I've put in the LoRa. Uh, we'll have it as strength one, because why not? See what this generates. And there we go. She looks a little bit raggedy there, maybe perhaps slightly worse for wear, but nevertheless, quite a good output. It looks like Easy Photo does appear to be easy, and you can use it to swap faces in photos. I guess it does what its name suggests. A bit like Reposer, my workflow which not only generates a version of the face you provide, but also the hair, body and clothing too, all in a few seconds without any training, just from a single image.